Hey everyone, this is Walt and Melissa from Mass Talk back with another Disney Dining Review and today we are going to do a review of Le Cellier. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more Disney videos as well as live streams throughout the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just hit that bell notification, that way you're notified every time we do a new video or go live. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, if you'd like to help support our channel and help us make our videos better with even better content, there is a link in the description below to do so. Any support is never required, but always much appreciated. And let's get right into it. We are going to do a review of Le Cellier, one of the signature restaurants in Walt Disney World. Now, a little bit of information about Le Cellier up front. It is a signature dining restaurant located in the Canada Pavilion in Epcot. And they serve just lunch and dinner. No breakfast served here, right? Right. Lunch is from 12.30 p.m. to 3.55 p.m. And dinner is from 4 to 9 p.m. daily. They also do take the Disney dining plan. They take the dining plan and the deluxe plan. They do not take the quick service dining plan. And with the dining plan, it is a two-table service credit, correct? That is correct. I will say this about Le Cellier. It's a really unique restaurant in all of Walt Disney World, especially Epcot itself. Decor-wise, the restaurant's designed to resemble a wine cellar. There are no windows and the lighting is low, which gives it an intimate setting. There are stone arches and bottles of wine that are displayed in the wood and glass showcases around the entire restaurant. Very nice. It is very nice. When you say it's very, what did you say, romantic almost yeah, like? Yeah, it's almost like a romantic atmosphere. If you don't care for dimly lit settings or you want to make sure you bring your glasses or readers if you need them yeah. because it isn't going to be super bright. It can be hard to read the menu. That's the one thing I noticed, but um, I think it gives a nice kind of quiets the atmosphere a little bit. I don't have anything against it. No, I agree 100%. And speaking of atmosphere, there's always somewhat subdued and quiet the atmosphere there, but it's still very nice and relaxing. The restaurant itself isn't very big, but it didn't feel cramped. It didn't feel noisy for an enclosed setting. No, not at all. It was enjoyable. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. 100%. It was very, very nice. It's not a very big restaurant, and I really want to emphasize that. A lot of folks walk in there and expect it to be one of the real big ones, mm -hmm. almost like you get at Crystal Palace or some of these other places. Oh, yeah, not at all. Not at all, but it didn't feel cramped. It didn't feel that way at all. No. Now, as for some of the menu items. Yeah, they're actually really known for their cheddar cheese soup and their poutine. And, of course, their steaks. But there are other selections for many different palates as well. Some of the things that we tried. Now, of course, one thing I do like um, that you get at many sit-down restaurants. You get a great bread assortment that's brought to your table when you get there. And they have an assortment, a couple of different rolls. One of them is a multi-grain style roll. And then they have these wonderful pretzel breadsticks that are warm. Really yummy. I think most of us fought over the pretzel breadsticks because... Because they yeah. were so good. Well, they were good. They were really, <laughs> really good. The one thing I'll say about any kind of bread that comes to the table, even with bread, people can be picky. I'm one of them. I only like certain kinds of bread. <laughs> the warm pretzel bread sticks were fantastic. I just thought they were fantastic. Yeah, they were right up your alley for sure. Because yeah. the rolls themselves, I think, are a little bit the more hearty, harder on the outside. Almost mm -hmm. like a sourdough type roll. Some people like the more fluffy pull-apart rolls. But I thought they were all pretty good. I agree 100%. Not only that, they also have... Well, we tried the very famous, of course, cheddar cheese soup. Now, the one thing about the cheddar cheese soup, it depends on your, your taste because it is very rich. Very. It's made with a very sharp cheese and, of course, has the pale ale that they use, so it has that beer flavor to it. So if you're not into that flavor, you may not like this soup. I enjoyed it. Walt, not so much. Right. He's more into, I don't know if you've ever had Bob Evans and you go and you get the cheesy potato soup, the more like cheese from a can kind of soup. You Almost, know? <laughs> yeah, I hate to say that. So if you're more into that flavor, it's a totally different thing, folks. So it may not be your style. This is definitely a high-end cheddar cheese soup. And well, it's, it's authentic. It's it is. It's very rich. It's very high-end. It's very... Deep flavor. Yes. Yeah. And for those that may not be used to that type of flavor, right. it may not be as good for you. You might love it. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend that you at least try it. For me, it wasn't great, but Melissa ate it up, and, and I'm glad. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It has the crumbled bacon on the top, the thick cut yeah. applewood smoked bacon. Very flavorful, very rich, and, and, and worth trying if you if you like that kind of thing, but just be prepared. So um, the other thing we tried is the beef bourguignon poutine, which is their regular menu poutine. They usually right. have one other on the menu that they do change up from time to time, but the one we tried is their standard that has the Gruyere cheese, the bourguignon gravy, truffle. Right. So we enjoyed it. Walt liked it a lot. I mean, you I can't did. really go wrong with fresh cut fries and gravy and cheese so <laughs> it's a plus and worth trying for sure yeah the poutine was very good i love gravy fries anyway and this was just like a high end of that i thought it was fantastic i definitely would try it again 
I highly recommend it as well. The one thing I will say about Le Cellier, and I, you can pretty much say this about any restaurant, pace yourself with what you eat. Mm-hmm. You get your bread up front, you get your soup, you get your poutine. <laughs> and you're and yet, full. And you haven't even gotten, <laughs> right, you haven't even gotten to your main course yet, plus dessert at the end. So be sure to pace yourself. It's hard to try everything. Some people can do it. If you can, fantastic. But just remember, save room for that main course. Yeah, especially when your appetizers are carbs, carbs, and carbs. They fill you up pretty quickly. They can. So you can wait. Maybe save some of your bread to eat with your dinner. I have a hard time doing that because usually I'm starving. When we get to a restaurant and the... I love bread and butter, so usually I'm like gobble, gobble, gobble. And then I'm like, oh, I can't eat my dinner. Or I eat it anyway, and then I feel like I have to waddle around the park for the rest of the day. It's true. (laughs) Now, as for the main courses. Oh, yeah. So they have several options. They have a New York strip, the filet mignon. They have a porterhouse for two as far as steak selections go. But there are things for people that don't want steak. There is a maple brine chicken breast a lobster pot pie, a cavatelli pasta uh, a la ratatouille. So it has ratatouille-style vegetables like the zucchini, summer squash, tomatoes, things like that, and a lamb shank. So there are selections for people that don't want steak. Now, us personally, we are steak people. Our entire party of five all got the Le Cellier filet mignon, oddly enough. Now, let me say this. Le Cellier is known for their steak. Right. So this is their signature thing. This is their signature item is the steak. So there are other options, but what they're mainly known for is the steak. And I want to kind of quantify that Mm -hmm. because Melissa is correct. We all got steak. Right. We all got the exact same thing. But when we talk about the steak, I think you'll understand why. This is why we wanted to go there. Because we like steak, we heard they have great steak. There are other signature steak restaurants out there, but... They come with a much higher price tag. Much higher. And in this case, it isn't cheap, but at the same time, I think you're getting a fantastic cut of meat at a reasonable price, and it's delicious. We're also the type of people that don't get our steaks like rare or medium rare. We get them medium well. And the fact that these steaks were extremely tender, you really, Walt was saying this off air earlier, you don't need a knife to cut them. You cut it with a fork. It was incredible. It's just so flavorful, so well seasoned, melts in your mouth. It was a fantastic steak. And it's gonna run you about 60 bucks for a, a filet, but For us, it was well worth it when I know you can go to some other ones, probably pay almost twice as much. And this is something that we on a special occasion can afford to do and was extremely enjoyable. Not one of us disliked our cut of meat. No, it was absolutely fantastic, the entire thing. And to me, like I was telling Melissa, this was more of a dining experience. Mm -hmm. It really was an incredible experience. It's the best steak I've ever had. I've had a lot of steaks. This one, to me, is the best I've ever had. Now, I haven't had Yachtsman. I haven't had Victoria and Albert. So maybe if I go to one of them one of these days, maybe I'll change my mind. But if I have to recommend a steak to someone in Walt Disney World, I'm recommending Le Cellier. Sure. This is the one. The steak was unbelievably juicy, so tender. The flavor was incredible. I didn't need any steak sauce on it. It was fantastic just the way it was yeah. It was made, the way it was cooked. When you have a good steak, you, you don't shouldn't need, enhancements. need any enhancements. I agree. As it, you should be able to eat it as it comes, and I think it's phenomenal. I'd go there again. I don't really feel the need to have to spend twice as much for a steak when I can find something here that is something we can afford to do from time to time. And it's still very satisfying yes. and wonderful. Yes, absolutely. And they have a wonderful wine selection if something that you like and several options on the menu for those of you who like to partake in that. It's a great place to go to pair with your steak or other food as well. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Now, as for dessert, we didn't really get dessert because we were so (laughs) full from dinner. It's very filling. Yes. It really is. I think their portions are decent. Are you getting a gigantic piece of steak or a filet? No, it's not gigantic. But it was still very filling. The fillets are technically more small. You do get the medallion-sized piece of meat. Other steaks are different. We didn't try the others, so we can't say that for sure, you know, what size-wise. But I thought the portion sizes were good. Yeah. I had no complaints whatsoever. And I like that it has a mushroom risotto that comes with it and an asparagus tomato relish and a truffle butter sauce, which I thought was great. Maybe if your palate isn't as a high range, there are other add-ons you can get. There are loaded worsen, like cheesy mashed potatoes, a four cheese macaroni and cheese. So there are other selections you can do for sides to add on as well or accompaniments that you can order on the side. Yeah, and as for desserts, we didn't get dessert. No, but there's some really tasting sounding desserts out there. Really, really yummy. Like uh, a maple creme brulee, if you 
like creme brulee, uh, warm pecan brown butter p- tart, chocolate maple Yukon bar. That's like a chocolate maple ganache shortbread cookie with like a caramel sauce. It sounds super yummy. It so does sound pretty good, actually. I would like to try some of these things, like a strawberry cheesecake, some really yummy, yummy selections that are probably worth trying. So if you've tried them, let us know. And there you go. That's the review, kind of short but sweet, of La Cellier. Different items to choose from, absolutely. If you're not looking for steak, you have other options. If you're looking for a steak, we think it's a very good value for a great steak. Mm -hmm. It's not incredibly cheap. No, it's not. It's pricey. But for what you get, I think it's within a a good value of being reasonable. Right. If you're looking for a great steak and you want to try to keep your costs to a minimum as best you can, this is the place to go. That's our dining review of La Cellier in Epcot. Great place to visit. Now it's out to you guys. Let me hear from you. Have you done La Cellier before? Maybe you liked it. Maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments below what you did like about it. Maybe you didn't. If you have other questions about it, we'll answer anything you have. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, just hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you are notified every time we go live or do a new video. Last but not least, if you could hit that share button and also hit the like button. It definitely helps the channel, helps the video, and definitely helps us out. We'd appreciate that. And with that, that's it. That's our review. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We definitely enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.